Okay, we're gonna work on the brakes here. So we're gonna do the uh, get figure out what this brake line needs to be at right now on the bike here. This one's obviously doesn't look like it's bent anywhere near the right spot. So I gotta go ahead and put the brake pedal assembly together, rebuild it, get it mounted up on the bike here. We got a new master cylinder for it, and got some new hardware I dug out. Found the old one of the original bolts. So I matched it up to a couple new ones, so get rid of that rusty piece of crap. So this pedal, uh, this brake uh, um, backing plate here for the brake looks to be tweaked a little bit. So it looks like they fell down on a little bit. And if you look at it, it's got a little bit of a whoop de doo in there. So I gotta straighten it out. I gotta check out the clearance on the pedal stud. And then this uh, push rod on here is pretty damn loose. You see how much it moves around, so that's a lot of your brake travel going away. So I gotta probably weld that hole up and repunch it. Because I wanna make stuff better than it was. Having crappy brakes is not good. So, first thing I'm gonna do here is go ahead and get the Get the backing plate straightened out. So, time to use my press. Get this over here where I can see what I'm doing. All right, so basically we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna straighten this thing. So it's pretty much bowed like this. So you flip it over, put some pressure here, here, and then push in the middle. Should bend it back more or less straight. We'll see how we're going to do that. Let's see. Gotta get something thin to go across here, right between here. That's relatively tall to clear the stud. That'd be another problem. Let's see what we're going to do here. piece of metal like this laying around so it won't clear the stud but it'll clear and go side to side between two blocks like this now I just need another one to go here that's going to be high enough to hold this side so it looks like that needs to be about an inch tall what you got laying around it's about an inch tall not much stacks of material to play with. It's pretty close to this one here, I guess. Old brake pads come in handy for a lot of things. Shims is one of them. Perfect. Okay, now I just push on that. Something soft, like a chunk of aluminum. Put it right where it was bent, over the holes. It's going to want to bend right where the big hole is over here, so I'm going to kind of support it a little bit. See what happens. Support right there would help. Throw something in a jam under there. Break that. There we go. Okay. I'm crush it now. Get a lot of spring back there. So 
So, a little bit flatter. Take your scale, stick it on there, and see if what you did. Doesn't look like it did a lot. You still see the gap under there. The problem is it wants to bend right here with no support. So we put our straight edge across that area. See how much that needs to bend. It needs to bend through there too. Okay. So you get kind of an idea where it needs to bend at. Find the worst spot and bend it there. It appears to be worse bent right at the angle like this. So that's the angle I want to try to bend it at. So we gotta figure out how we're gonna make it bend in that area. tons of pressure. A lot of spring back. So Harley parts are made out of spring steel. They're heat treated so they spring back a lot. <clears throat> okay, we're getting a little bit better. So we're fairly flat through here. We're still pretty bad across where the hole is here though. I need to bend more where the hole is. So I just won't support that any, there anymore. Let it bend there naturally. Take a look, see how it looks. Still pretty high there. So the whole area is high right through here, straight across here now. So now you just put something right here and bend it down. Stress on this area. Try to make it bend where you want it to bend. Okay, let's see what we got this time. A little closer. And over here. I'm getting pretty flat on this side now. Yeah, it's pretty even through there. Still a lot right through here, though. Looks like this rivet here for the brake stop here is getting a little loose back in here. Starting to see a little gap, and you have to repeat that over a little bit. Have to work on that a little bit. All right, got an interruption. All right, back working on this brake pedal. Trying some different things here to get it squared up. It's pretty good metal, it doesn't like to straighten out, so I did pretty good on that time. It's getting pretty flat rock in there. It's got quite a bit on this edge over here. Get a 
across where this window is right here. Shows quite a bit. And you go over here, we had quite a bit of bend right here where the pedal was. So you can see how it's got the gap. Under there a little bit, not too bad. Go this other direction, it's pretty flat, but it's still got a little bit in there. So it's still got a little bit of a bow right through here. So I gotta keep bending on it, try to get the move. Like I said it doesn't like to bend much, it's good metal. Try to bend it straight down. The brake pad is going to give a little bit of soft material to <clears throat> bend against, so it should increase the uh, side of the pole. Maybe we're going to use our big uh, body hammer here. I didn't like me too much. Have to get another one now. Okay, let's see what we did. Still got a pretty good bow on it. Starting the right direction, but it needs <clears throat> needs more than that. We're not doing any damage here because we're bending on the plate. Okay, let's see where we're at now. There we go. Starting to get a little better now. A little bit too much there in the middle, so that's a good sign. right where the <clears throat> brake pedal mount is right here. Doesn't matter too much about the hole. It, doesn't, it only hits on the frame right here. So when you go across the frame mount to where your pedal mount is, pretty good. It's pretty even there. All right, let's see what the pedal looks like. This is our brake pedal. It's actually a relatively tight fit. Not too bad. Really a lot worse. Still looks like it's bent in a little bit. Look at your pedal. See how it gets tighter here than down in here. That means it still needs to be bent more in the direction we're going. Let's 
see if I agree with that here though. Bending part. This is loose too. Yep. Good work on that too. Okay, so it looks like this now needs to go this direction, which is the same way I've been bending on it. <clears throat> Give it some more. Like it bends, but it just flexes. At some point, we're gonna get some bending on it. Yeah, we're getting a little bit closer now. Show us some activity. Still bent more on this one side, but. It needs to be bent right here in the middle, right here. Let's see. Try not to drop stuff. That ain't happening. Too much crap on the press. Can't work when you got too much crap in your workstation. Still bent in the same spot. A lot of spring back. Better, but still need more. Should be on more concentrated pressure this time. I'm just going to put the nut right here in the middle. Bend. Let's 
some point it's going to go, oops, too much. Hey, it finally moved. All right. Finally. Now look at that. Pretty even all the way across now. Amazing. Yep, let's go that way. Let's go that way. Finally got to straighten out. I'm way too close to see anything that time. We're looking at the back side now. Flat on this side too, as well as the other side. Let me look at it this way. When you get up here in this point, this is still off. But... Yeah, it heads uphill pretty good on this corner. That's up where the crash bar and the front master cylinder mount is. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty flat this way. That's only a little bit low on that corner. That's easy to get out that one. Reproduction of Ben and Hal. Lots and lots of springing going on there. All right, I got that a little bit flatter. So now we're all the way up to this tip here. We're pretty flat now. Okay, so now we got two things that are loose. We got this. This is loose, which I'm going to have to deal with. And then this one over here. Doesn't feel loose, but it doesn't look like it's peeing down very good against this edge. So I need to somehow tighten this one up. So I gotta make me up a tool to go around it to hold it. Which I'll have to do later. So basically I need something like this that goes over the shoulder that protects it. And we'll push on this shoulder right here on the edge. And then I can go ahead and go over here, heat this up with a torch, get it red hot, and then pin it down real tight. And that should lock it down pretty good. And you limit this wobble. Now if you weld it, now you have to weld it around where this rivet mark is, you also have to weld around this washer, all the way around the washer. Because the washer is just loose too, if you look at it. It wobbles around on you a little bit. So... And I need to do the same thing on Alan's military bike. I got to make the same tool, but with an oversized shaft to hold his in, so I can rivet it in too. So it looks like I got two things to do. Same basic tool, but two different tools. So we'll make that up. Figure that out. Now let's see how this pedal looks on here now. Hopefully, look at the same shot. Looks a lot more even now. See how it's more equal here to here. Before it was bent in a little bit. So it looks pretty damn equal right now. That's good. So that means I got the pedal in the right spot. Okay. So next thing is we're going to put the mouse cylinder on here and see how it works. I'm also going to probably wind up welding up the hole here. Whatever all this looseness in this pivot is, this clevis. I got to fix that. So that'll be another thing I'm going to deal with. So let's switch sides over to here. There we go. And we'll go ahead and work on this. See how this fits. So the way this work is, master cylinder goes inside of here. And then it bolts into here. And it should require some kind of a spacer. This one looks like it's relatively flat. It's 
double check to make sure things are square. Looks like it's going pretty straight to me. So take the boot off. You can, lay the, you can look at it this way here versus this way. It looks pretty, pretty square. So this sits in flat. So now it's either going to be dead center or it's going to be offset a certain amount. So what we want to do right now is look at our edge here and see if this brake pedal is flush with this mount here. If it is, then it's on center. Of course, it's hard to do with one hand here holding this. Our table here. Right in our straight edge here. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to see if the center line of this goes through the center of the master cylinder. And if you look at it, it's not even close. So we need to go up a couple hundred thou. So right now we're sitting right here where the holes are. Right where this sits on there. And you take your two bolts if you want and take the nut off. Where they actually go. Okay, that's where they actually sit. Now the clevis is right in the center of the lever here. So this here should line up with this over here. So if the center of this lever goes in the center of the push rod, we're even. So you can see we're on top. If you drop it down to your center line, and you notice how it's not in the center of the master cylinder. The center of the master cylinder is way down here. So that means we're off by a certain amount here. This needs to be jacked up. Now, easily you have a crash bar that goes underneath this front pivot right here. And that's easy about 5 16 of an inch thick. So that means we're going to have to have probably something that's about 5 16 thick on both of these. Unless he has a crash bar he's using, which I don't know if he is or isn't. I'd have to go look through all his parts and see if he has one, because I don't know what he's using. So for now, I want to see what the spacing is going to be, so i got to find me a couple spacers. For now, we'll get a stack of washers. So we'll just go back here and grab me a couple washers here. So these are basically masked at the height of a front crash bar. Go back over here. And then we put these on our master cylinder. Put these back on our bolt holes. Okay. That's pretty much roughly the thickness of a crash bar. Now we put our straight edge right across. You can see how we're above center line right now. When we drop it down to center of the pedal where the clevis would be, if you look at the hole in the mass cylinder, now we're dead center. So we need to run a spacer is roughly about 200 thou thick to put the mass cylinder in the right spot. Now if you don't do it that way, what happened is, is, is this clevis here would be pushing at an angle. When you push at an angle, it shoves on this piston at an angle and actually causes it to, you're pushing it into the bore of the piston in here, or the cylinder, and it will chew up this thing and make it stick and chew up the o-ring and start leaking. It'll also probably transfer metal and start galling, which causes it to leak. It might not leak out the backside, but it'll leak internally. Hydraulic pressure in your brake will feel a little spongy. So that's why you gotta do it that way. So right now, let's try doing a mock-up of the clevis. and put all this stuff back in like it's going to be in the real world. There it is. And if you use gravity to help you, 
certainly works easier. Okay, now we put this all together like this. Just grab a couple of nuts. Let me get a couple of three ace nuts real quick. Make that quick. There's no nuts here. lock nuts, we're just using the standard nut for mock-up. We're just doing a quick bench mock-up here. Now in the real world we're going to have a little bit thicker washer right here probably. Crash bars are usually thicker than that. So now I can move this around and not have it fall out. So now we want to look at it this way, make sure we're pushing dead center. You see how it looks pretty close. Look in the back view. You can see it lines up pretty damn nice. And then you want to look at it from this view, make sure it's pushing straight too. So now when you make this thing work, it's pushing in line, see? It doesn't matter which view you look at it, it's not cocking it. See, as it goes in and out, it works. So that's what you want to see. Okay, so we know this all fits in there correctly. Now the next problem is we've got to get this brake line to go up in here somehow and make it work. Now we got to figure out if the brake line goes somewhere up under here where we got these which means probably cross the top and go into that hole there or does it go behind this and circle around in which case I got a big gap here. So that's our next problem to figure out. So let's jack this back up Put it over here so you can kind of see better. Let's see if we can figure this out. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the master cylinder out of my way. At least this one bolt here has to come out. Because this bolt goes right here. Actually, this one goes up here, excuse me. Like that's the way it's going to go. Looks pretty good fit. Okay, so now when you got this thing up here, you can obviously see how this line is nowhere near where we need to be. You can also see how tight it is on the case right here. So we have a good fit here. It comes right out from behind our case, comes right across the top and goes right in, which looks really nice for fitment. And that's going to clear everything. Everything looks really good except this here doesn't go down to this. Now I can take this and bend this down and re-bend this whole line and hopefully not crimp it and I can probably make it go down to there and that's a nice rooting. I like that. It's nice out of the way. Not near anything that's going to hurt it. Be pretty nice fitment. The cover goes over the top of this and across only about halfway over. Just lays across the top so you have plenty of room. So that looks pretty good. But I doubt if it's supposed to be that way. Now the next thing is, is the back side. Is there room to come through here the back side, back through here, and circle around and come up into here. And once again, this is way higher than this. So this looks like this was supposed to be underneath, way down under here, and come up through here. So instead of being on top, it's on the bottom of this over here. So now we got to figure out if we're going to be able to do it that way. 
Now you got a big hole in here, but that's not for going through. That's because they had this tab right here for the spring. There's a spring that goes right here like this. Here that goes over to our pedal right here. That's our return spring. So that's not for putting a line through. That's just why they bent it down. Okay, so we know how that's not going to be that way. Okay, so now that we got kind of a rough idea what we need to do, now we need to take a look at this and see if we can make it work. It's always fun to try to get these things to work. This is going to go behind this bracket down here, and somehow that has to get behind the back side. Obviously it doesn't go through here, there's no place for it. So that means this would have to be bent down to come behind here and go around, and obviously it's not even close to being in that spot. So my guess is, instead of being where I have it with the motor right now, I'd have to move it to a different location on the motor. So instead of being right coming through here, like I got it, I'll have to come through here. And that'll let this line drop all the way down and come right across the bottom here, which should be about where we want to be. So I have to re-bend this line so it goes down way down to here. So basically it needs to be basically flush with the bottom of this frame. So I get to move that line around. And that's why we got the motor nice and light right now. If I had a complete motor to work around, it'd be a pain in the butt. Okay, so this one just loose. Oh, good. I didn't put any nuts on that. That makes that easy. But I do have the primary bolts in there, though. your eyes. So you got to beat the plate back to get the threads, the pressure off that and the bolt comes out. Some people don't like it when I use my hammer around here. Too bad. Hooked on the line there. Okay, so I need to get this line go a little bit deeper and further down. This 
is where you need three people to help you again, which I don't have, so. So I need to loosen this nut up, bend it down. Rotate this side down, then I can bend the tube to where I need to go to. So I'm gonna drop it down and put a little bend in it. Oops, a little bend in it. Bend it out a little bit. Bend it in a little bit. Bend it down a little bit more. Let's see, I figure we're going to bend in that thing. Bending where I want it to. I need to bend it further in this other way. <sighs> Thumb ain't quite strong enough. I need to get something to bend the next to. when it won't bend where you want it to. This is being a pain. Two wants to bend where it wants to, not where I want to be. I don't want to bend it here. It keeps bending here. I want to bend it here. That's my problem. I'm trying to bend it there and it keeps bending here. And if you keep bending here, you're going to break it off. You're going to bend it here in the fitting where you don't want to bend it. So at this point here, we're going to have to just kind of leave it where it is. When you put this thing way down here at the bottom, it starts rubbing down here, which I don't want it to be. When it's up here, you got plenty of room, see? But when you rotate it down, it hits the frame right there. I'm trying to avoid that, but... I'm going to have to just kind of bend it a little bit where I don't want it to. You have to kind of make it work the way you want it to. Okay. Next problem is. Fairly significant bend in there. Okay. 
This is going to have to bend around the frame over on this side. Like that. Lots of chrome popping going on. I'm trying not to uh, crimp it either. Okay. Okay, kind of got things bent around a little bit. Probably not enough, but I don't want to put the motor back in it. Okay, so I got this, try not to bend that. I got this coming out of fitting straight, so it's not bending right in the fitting. We don't want it to. I got kind of an S bend going down through here, so it clears the frame all the way through here. We're trying to get below the mount here, so it's not hitting the frame. I think I got to go a little bit lower, but I'm not sure. I come across here. I'm going to wrap it around the frame right here, trying to get it up inside of here, because when you put the bracket on here, it goes flat. See, there's no recess in the back side. So I'd be pushing hard on the line right here. And that should give me the right general area where I want to be over here. This might have to go lower through here. It's close, but I think it might have to go down. But we'll see. We'll put the cases back in here. And we'll see what we got to work with. sits in there and you know, we have a little bit of a bow in there I want to get that bow out I think it'll be all right bend it down a little bit right there force that in there Okay, motor's in there where it belongs. It looks pretty good. Lots of clearance. So you can see how it's coming through there pretty good. Not hitting on anything that we can really see. So we're rubbing really heavy on the frame here and going to be crushed in right here. So this is going to be jammed in there really tight so it's not really going to vibrate. I might put a little black electrical tape around right here and right here to give me something soft to push against. That way it won't rub metal on metal or metal on paint in this case. But it'll collect dirt in there and it'll chew it up like a like sandpaper and eat through your line a little bit. So we're going to try to avoid that. I don't want that to happen obviously. Okay, so now we take this, put this back up on here. Oh, wrong one. Goes up on this one. There it is, way up there. Okay, 
Okay. Now, see how this is way over here now. Now that needs to come over here to our line. Get this out of the way. Damn, she should crap out of the way over here. So you can kind of see how it's a little, little snug up in there. Okay, so now we got to figure out we're going to make this thing go over where we want it to go. Let's get the cap out of there. Not even close to where it needs to be. See how that's going to even work over there. It's way off in the wrong angle and too short. And we don't have any room, any extra line. So we're pretty much just going to have to make it work. There's no way I can bend this line what I need so I gotta take the mass cylinder out put this in the line and I use the mass cylinder just to rip this line wherever it needs to go to and it's gonna stretch and pull on it pretty heavily but I have no option So we're going to go ahead and put the line on here. Easier said than done. Is that a dumbass can't put it in the hole or is it the thread? It's too, uh, too much chrome in it. It looks like we got another chrome problem. Imagine that. Chrome on chrome, we have problems. Well, it's really hard to believe. Yeah, that's not, not even close to going. Yeah, that's protesting heavily. Let me get this pedal out of here so I got room to work. Scratch up the fender. Yeah, that's some really good stuff there. So, you don't want this to gall up into the threads in the hole in here. So you're going to put something on these threads, so you got to use some hot wax, or just wax, paste wax, or some other pressure lubricant, preferably not oil based, but around here we ain't got much but oil based, so. We're going to put some on the threads, just enough for lubricant, not enough to build it up to get into the side of the master cylinder. I'm not going to pour it in the mouse cylinder because then it just goes in there. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to put lapping compound on it unless I take the whole cylinder apart, which I might wind up having to do, but I'm going to try this trick for the first. See what happens. Take a look at it, make sure you're going in straight. If it looks like you are going at an angle, don't keep forcing it. See how it looks like it's straight to the body. If you cross through it, that will definitely be bad all the way. Yeah, chrome is not happy with me right now. Okay, I'll get on there far enough it went all the way in. 
Okay. So it does lock it up, see? So we're going to leave it to where it's just tight enough that it, it can rotate. But we got no clearance. Okay, that way I can bend it, force it where I need it to go. I'm going to look at the other side and see if I got extra room over there to do any pulling my way. Mm, not really. Pretty tight. Okay, put this on there now and see how much I can force it. Put a short bolt in there to hold the plate on. This bolt here needs to go into this hole here. So we're going to kind of force and press to get it in there. The chrome is protesting. in there I'm going to need to put in there. There we go. I kind of force it. There we go. Snug fit, huh? Okay. Sure, where the angle is, it should be close. Okay, let's get this back apart now. Yeah, you're sending that. A little bit of tension on that bolt. There we go. So I'm gonna pull the other bolt that I just put in. Figure out where that hole's at. Okay, it's on. Let's 
definitely tight. There's no way you could have form fitted that line with your hands or any other method. That was wrapped around this bracket here. And we're going to have to get clearance and we cannot have it rubbing on that edge like that. You've got to grind that whole thing away or you've got to get, bend the line out of the way. I don't want to cut the plate because it weakens it. So I'm going to bend the line. You can see how tight this is in here. It's pretty snug. But it's in there. Over here on the back side, I doubt if you can even see it. It's buried down in there someplace. Okay, so right now I'm going to put a screwdriver or something in here to attempt to bend that line. I need to get some clearance. You can see how it's wrapping up through here. See all the crumbs flaking off. So I got to get some room in there. And you can see how it's tight over here. So I can't just make this line any longer. It's it's hitting on the case already. Right back in there. It's right up right. It's either right against the case or real close to it. I think it's got clearance there, but it's right up to it. And you can't move the switch anymore. Because if the previous video remember, this line here is stretched tighter and held to get in this one because it's too short back here. We're jammed in there. And we're right up. I got a little, just a little bit of a gap there. No, I still got my gap. So, you see how tight things are. Okay, so I'm going to have to bend, some, bend that off that bracket. And you can see how this is really easy to do if you got the motor out, or you know, stripped down. A lot of this fitting you want to do before you, before you put the bike together. Over here, you can probably see a little bit better what's going to happen on that line right there. We're definitely going to get bending on it. Ideally, I want to put this in here like this. Stretch away. I don't really have any access to the back one in here. Can't even really see in there to see what's happening. It's definitely tight though. Okay. Tighten up the line here. <laughs> the wrench won't even go on there with the fittings bent. There we go. There. Right, tighten that up. Get back and make sure we got clearance here. We have clearance. Okay. Tons of clearance now. So, we got line, we got clearance coming down that line right there. I tried to bend a little bit more clearance up under here. Under there, where'd my finger go to? I can't even see my finger. There it is. So I tried to get some more clearances up under there, but it wraps around up under there. I can't even tell from shooting video, you can't even see anything in. It's kind of tight up in there, so you can see how it's wrapped around hard around this line right here, a frame tube. But everything else is uh. Except we're still pretty good over here. It didn't really affect me bending it there, so we're good. 
And over here, you see the gap. You hear the gap. If the line's make a noise like this, it's not being held. So that means it's got it's got clearance on it. And this is full tight, so we're good there. And we got room up under here. Now the only thing we don't know is when you put the cover on here if it's gonna clear all that, but if the cover doesn't clear this tube, we're gonna have to bend the cover because that line's not gonna bend. It's pretty well in there the way it is. Actually, then we got our brake pedal that I can't put in right now, but it goes over here like this, obviously. So I'm going to have to work on this here later. All right, well, there's how that all goes, more or less. And we still got a lot of good clearance up here for exhaust pipe to come through here, because the exhaust pipe does come right through here. And then we got to make sure this clears the exhaust pipe, and I can't mock up the pipe right now. And if it, if it hits on that, I'm going to have to bend this up a little bit tighter up in the air. We'll have to bend this up higher, which I can do a little bit, but not much. My guess is I'm probably going to have to bend it. So we've got a nice bending tool right here. It's called a hammer. So you get a little extra clearance. See? Extra clearance is good clearance. And that's how you do it. What do we do over here? We lose anything? Nope, we still got our clearance here. Still tight up under there. But now we got a little more exhaust clearance. So if nothing else, the pipe will be further away from the line so it won't get so hot. And it moves up and down, so it's it's got clearance inside the frame. Which we can't really see very well, but going through there there's clearance. So Oh well, you gotta check all these things when you're looking at this stuff. It's all tight. Okay, so that's how you do that. What fun! It only took about an hour and a half, see? Nine o'clock. Okay, so it looks like the next thing I gotta do, I gotta work on the pedal a little bit. And then I get to start working on the motor. Maybe we should make that complete. So, one of those two things will get worked on next. We'll find out. Stay tuned for the next video.